We're awaiting Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to arrive in Del Rio, Texas, for a briefing on the border crisis. Del Rio, of course, is where more than 12,000 people, mostly Haitian migrants, have camped out under a bridge in squalid conditions. Border officials are overwhelmed. Agents on horseback were struggling to turn away the surge of people crossing the Rio Grande. And you might imagine President Biden would be working overtime to deal with this catastrophe and the magnitude and the scope and the reach that it has all over the country. But he, in fact, spent his weekend at his home in Delaware taking leisurely bike rides and hanging out at the beach. It's not just him showing no sense of urgency. Vice President Kamala Harris was at their alma mater, Howard University, this weekend to do the coin toss at a football game. Despite their inaction on the actual crises, plural, going on, None of them are going away, particularly this border situation. Even former Obama Homeland Secretary, Security Secretary Jay Johnson says President Biden needs to take it seriously. We have to get control of our, our borders. 200,000 a month is a lot of people. DHS just released the numbers for August. It's 200,000. August mm -hmm. is typically a month where it's very low. And those kinds of numbers and the images you just showed your audience, uh, saps the ability, it overwhelms the ability of DHS, the Border Patrol, ICE, to cope with uh, the, the incoming. It saps the communities on the border. It saps Catholic charities. Have to do something to enhance enforcement. You know, again, Mike, I want to hold out the best of thoughts that people are doing things for all the right reasons. Maybe at the um, beach house of the president, there's some sort of situation room where they've <laughs> mapped it all out and are going to solve the, the border crisis. Your thoughts? Well, I'm sure you're right. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> look, I, I, everybody deserves a vacation. You take a vacation when you want. I, I would hope, I would think somebody would point out the optics. You know, it's too easy a, a target frankly to criticize. I want to go back to the to the theme of the first block, which for me anyway was what's going on? You know, Americans are are puzzled when they look around and they see these things happening before them that they're seemingly inexplicable. Hmm. The, the the coin toss is a pretty great metaphor, right? Ah, maybe we'll enforce the laws, <laughs> or maybe we won't. Wow. Right? I mean like when you have to me, you know, just speaking personally, the, the whole border conversation and the whole migration debacle and this humanitarian crisis, they're, they're all separate conversations. Then they're all under this rubric, this, this larger question, which I think is, do you enforce, what happens to a country that doesn't enforce the laws they have on the books? Mm -hmm. What happens, right? It leads reasonable, normal people to start feeling really profoundly disconnected from their government. If you have a law and you willfully ignore it, the unintended consequences of doing that over time are exponential. And mm -hmm. it's one more brick in the wall of this ambiguity and uncertainty that so many people are feeling. Why? And there's just no good answer. Miranda. Look, the fact is, we have to be honest, the border is wide open and that is by design. Joe Biden came in on the very first day of his presidency, unwound all those Trump era protections. And then since then, he started this fire. He's pretended that it isn't happening. He's ignored it. He's hoping the media ignores it. Unfortunately, with this uh, disaster under the bridge in Del Rio, you've got 15,000 mostly Haitian immigrants who are living, as you said, in squalid conditions, not enough food, not enough water. It's a humanitarian catastrophe. So they had to come in with plan B and pretend they were doing something. They lied to the American people and they said that they were going to ship all these people back, deport them back to Haiti. Most mm -hmm. of them have been living in Chile or Brazil for the last five years. So that's cruel. But they're not shipping them back. They, they sent back yesterday 327 Haitians, adult single males. The family groups, the rest of them, they have been shipped out uh, 3,000 of them to the rest of America, and that's what will happen. Most of those people will stay here and disappear into the community. So, so you know, I, I do want to ask this question, Emily, because there are real reasons, asylum, for people to be allowed to stay in this nation. And Haiti's president was killed, assassinated, just a few weeks ago. And, and we knew this summer that, that that nation was devolving very quickly. Those 
are legitimately refugees. But because Biden has left mm. the border open, no. right? Some of them might be able to apply, right? But because he's left the border open, as you heard Jay Johnson, former Secretary of Homeland under Obama, say, well, 200,000 are a lot. And look at how hot it is. This is usually not the month that they come in. Now you're having to deal with everything else on top of this. So if there are people who should be allowed to stay, and I'm not saying that all 15,000 of them under the bridge are, but they do have a right to apply at that point. We can't even take the applications. Oh, of course not. And our system is already so overwhelmed to the point that the waiting lists for legitimate asylum claims are over a year. We are absolutely overburdened and something needs to change. Clearly, however, at the direction of this administration, it doesn't seem like the border closing would be among the options that, they're, that they are entertaining. I have to point out as well, just to, to provide a little bit more color of the landscape for viewers, number one, over half of those over 300 Haitians that were deported were under the age of five. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that was, uh, I believe, a uh, few flights, I wouldn't even conjecture because I can't remember off the top of my head, but the Department of Homeland Security estimates that five to eight flights per day will start, will start occurring in combination with a bump of 400 border agents being put down to the border. Now this, remember after President Biden himself said, give me a couple days, man, when people said abolish ICE, when people said abolish the homeland security right. and border protection. So this all of a sudden now we are bumping up resources to a, an area that this president was very committed to depleting resources from. Uh, and final quick point as well that the governor Greg Abbott today wrote a letter pleading to President Biden to declare the state of Texas in a full state of emergency because of the burden on the local and state resources as well as federal. Well, because they could again, have done that six months ago. This issue is federal. I mean, this was a flip of the switch from yeah. those Trump policies, right? Right? Yeah. And as, as Mike and Miranda have been pointing out, it, it makes you feel in America like nothing works. Right. So you flip the switch and they literally could have declared a state of emergency in many states along the border the minute the switch was flipped. Exactly right. They flipped the switch and a flood of migrants came in. And meanwhile, we have an MIA problem missing an action problem, or maybe I should say MII missing an inaction problem, because mm -hmm. where are the Democrats? Instead of addressing this, mm. they're pushing for amnesty and that $3.5 trillion bill. Thankfully, the Senate parliamentarian said, no, 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 you can't do that. And where are the journalists outside of Bill Malusian, who has done amazing work for Fox News? Where are the journalists? They are MII. Well, some of us are trying to ask the questions, but we're just deemed annoying. <laughs> I'm used to it.